Know Your Enemy, Ways of the Harlot, Part 8, Hybrid Deceptions. Our world is cloaked in mystery, where truth is twisted for hidden agendas. The ancient civilizations and the technology were much more advanced than what we are taught today, and the proof is easily found in much of the stoneworks of the era. Our Heavenly Father's Word tells us clearly that He destroyed that first world age because of Satan and the sons of God who followed or allied themselves with Satan. God's Word also tells us that at this current time that Satan and the fallen angels are currently bound but they will return they will be cast from heaven and the purpose has also been written and it is a test of mankind and it will fulfill God's prophecy and it will set up all the world the all the nations for the great day the battle of the Lord at that last trump and that is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ if we understand earth is but a speck of dust compared to the broad expanse of the universe of which our Heavenly Father has created all things so when we look at like say in this photograph or this picture or this depiction of earth as you can see here's earth but look at all the expanse of the stars look at how small those are well if you're way over here on this planet looking back this way this is what kind of what you're going to see we're going to look like a little tiny speck in the whole universe and in the purpose of god's plan so we're through i'm just going to highlight some of the interesting uh movies or videos that's coming from hollywood and uh, and kind of just you know kind of just compare some of this uh these hybrid uh deceptions to hopefully make it clear but anyway we're just going to kind of take a look at some of this stuff the transformers that we have optimus prime he's the good guy right well he's in blue he's got that blue helmet uh of course my husband would argue he's got blue and red on but he's blue at his head his head's blue and so anyway it's a good it was some good movies but then they bring in this uh character called the fallen um he's in chains as long as optimus prime is alive but uh but when optimus prime is killed then he's released from his ba his bonds and he goes and he's got his little scepter sound weapon kind of thingamajig anyway but this is the fallen nafa it goes back to nephilim uh the fallen those who fell from heaven this fallen angel or however you want to apply it or perceive it and i don't expect everyone to discern or to even think the way that I do, but I, I just wanted to point out a few things that I thought was kind of interesting in some of this stuff uh, with these uh, Hollywood icons and characters and, uh, and, and things like that, but uh, my husband does not like to go to the movies with me because I, I'm busy sitting there um, looking at everything and pointing things out, and he, he says I just run the movie for him, so... But I just thought these were some interesting points, so I just wanted to point them out. And then you can perceive it or discern it however, you know, you're given. So, anyway, so now let's get on with the study. And then we have Avatar. Notice One Life Ends. Another Begins. And they're blue. It's amazing. Now here is Superman. Now what is a Superman without his main squeeze? 
You know, I mean, he's blue. He's got a big S on his chest. He's an alien. He's from a different planet coming to save the Earth. Who else do we know is blue? And here, here we've got Osiris with his main squeeze, his Lois. And then as we go on, uh, we've got, what is this, Krishna? And his main squeeze. You see how this kind of forms a, a pattern. Then we've got V. Uh, this was a mini-series back, oh goodness, several years ago. It was an interesting series because it had these alien ships, which we know uh, Ezekiel 1 describes these, uh, these circular disks. But uh, this was an interesting take on the aliens that were you know, that came to Earth. Um, they appear human, and the alien visitors are friends. But then, as we get into the series, we start seeing these little reptilian-looking eyes. So uh, they're cloaked, they're disguised, they're transformed. And see, here's the little skin, the little lizard skin or serpent skin. Okay, so we've gone from uh, the super hybrid characters to reptilians. And now we're looking at ancient aliens or the, quote, Anunnaki, uh, ancient alien kind of stuff. And I particularly like this series mainly because of the... Uh, the historical sites, the ancient sites that they go to, and it just proves when you see stones that uh, cannot even be lifted or cut today with the technology that man has, it just it, it just concretes the word of God because it it just shows proof of the Earth age that was destroyed, that first world age to bring in this second age of which we are living in t in today's time but it it just it just documents it so uh but now what i have problems with is that i can go in and, and watch these these shows and i can kind of discern between what the commentary is uh from that that is in the word of god and so if you're not able to discern this though you, you could uh fall for this stuff hook line and sinker and think that these quote Anunnaki's that are coming back, or um, like in the V, uh, they're our friends when they're not our friends. They're not here to save the planet. They're here on a mission with the permission of our Heavenly Father. They're going to be cut loose. They're going to be cast out of heaven to come here to fulfill His prophecy. This this is all coming about. And if you don't have the Word of God, if you don't understand. Uh, what has been said from the Old Testament to the New, that they come to destroy not just the flesh or um, that's not the purpose. It's to mislead and misguide the world to follow the Antichrist who is Satan and he is coming as the false Messiah. They, that's what all of this is, is about. And the Kenites, the sons of Satan, this is what they have been working for for thousands of years. This is what they've been striving for. So that's the deception. Uh, whether they, this is kind of a crazy looking little guy uh, with these great big old eyes. Um, you know, who knows whether they'll have hair or not. I don't know, but we are made in the image that we were in heaven. So that's, uh, that's the way God created us. But now these are, quote, uh, spiritual beings that are fallen angels, and they are going to appear as our friend and, quote, saviors, but they are not. And um, Jesus warns us. We have X-Men. Now, uh, now, this is a whole bunch of hybrids. Um, We've got good hybrids, we've got bad hybrids, you know. So it's the good hybrids against the bad hybrids. And the good hybrids, of course, are trying to, quote, save mankind from the bad hybrids. Um, you know, uh, the fallen angels are fallen angels for a reason. They left their first estate. 
they seduced the daughters of mankind or men and uh, and tried to wipe out the the bloodline that jesus christ would be born through and um the, so i mean you know they they are being held in chains until the appointed time when they will be cast from heaven so but anyway there's there's no such thing as a quote good hybrid uh a fallen angel is a fallen angel and the, uh god is going to they're set for destruction so uh you're either with god in his in his plan or you're against god you're in opposition but these are the many faces of the uh, the the X Men and I want to point out this little blue guy. He was the one that uh, they chose to be the quote st uh, statesman or speaker for the X Men, and he's blue. And we go back to uh, uh, we can go back to the, um, the blue. Uh, here's the Superman. There's the Osiris, Krishna. Uh, so anyway, when we get into all these blue these blue things uh see here's blue There's so much blue and with the little angel wings they there's you know the deception is there all these different quote um hybrid genes to to give people power and special powers and all this kind of stuff and and they're trying to make people believe that they are special because they have these these special powers, you know, and um, but these are the deceptions. The hybrids were wiped out, except for the line of the Kenites. And when we start looking at all this kind of stuff, it takes us back to the Garden of Eden, where Satan uh, seduced, had sex with Eve, and she conceived Cain. And then she also knew her husband, Adam, and conceived Abel. So, two separate sacks, two separate bloodlines. And so, uh, they were twins. And uh, Cain is not in Adam's genealogy for a reason, because he's not the son of uh, Adam. Then we go in, and we have Abel, and he is making a sacrifice to the Lord. And his, his sacrifice was accepted while his twin brother uh his maternal twin they have the same mother different fathers his was not accepted his was not a righteous um offering and so god refused it and he gave cain an op you know uh the option to do well and what does cain do he goes in and he's jealous he's mad and he's wrathful and he slays his brother abel he kills him he's the first murderer uh, and then he lies about it. Um, so, I mean, this is all points. Satan the, uh, is the father of Cain. Years later, our Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, he's born. Um, then the Kenites, uh, the sons of Cain, have infiltrated the priesthood. And they are accusing Christ of all these wrong things and uh, accusing him of even being uh, a devil himself and so what do they do they go in and holler crucify him and they're all joyful because this whole little nest of kenites that are disguised as judah but are not jew they want his death as well uh, they try to in today's time you hear all this saying that uh, oh well it was Rome that killed and crucified Christ well yes but then again no because Pilate saw no wrong in him and he gave them a choice uh, you can have uh, Jesus Christ or you can have Barabbas who was a murderer and, uh, and 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 what did they do they released the murderer because that was their own that was their own people that's who they were and then they murdered our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross but this was all prophecy he came in the flesh Jesus came as Emmanuel God with us he 
is Yeshua, or, or they want to say the word Jesus, and that's fine. But it means God's Savior. So he is the bridge. He's the bridge between us and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, we are all saved. But through his blood, we are washed in his blood, and our sins are forgiven for those who honestly and earnestly repent before the Lord. John 3 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds might be made manifest, that they were wrought in God. This, this was the purpose of our Lord Jesus Christ being sent, and this is our Savior. He is the Savior of all people. He is our High Priest before our Heavenly Father. During the time that Jesus was on the earth in the flesh, there, um, we can go back and we can find what Satan is doing. There was uh, in the in the book of Luke, and uh, referenced also in Matthew sixteen twenty three, Mark eight thirty three, uh, as well as Zechariah three. Uh, we have the temptations of Satan. He was on earth at this time. He was able to transverse the earth to and fro, and he tempted Christ. And we'll look at uh, Luke four to see what Christ tells him. Luke 4 reads, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did, did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up unto a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus t answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now remember these words, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him, Satan brought Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay, so Satan is trying to tempt Christ with scripture so what what is he quoting here if we go back to Psalms 91 11 um, what does it say here there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. 
because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. So when we go, what did Satan say again? Uh, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And that's not, that's not what was said. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So Satan has twisted this. Uh, he's added some words in there and he has changed the meaning of it. But this is, this is how Satan operates. So we have to be really careful. Uh, in verse, uh, we'll continue, verse uh, Luke 4, 12. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from, from him for a season. Okay, so Christ tells him to get behind him, and he is departed physically. He, he can no longer transverse the earth to and fro for a season. Okay, so... He's now bound in heaven. He's behind Christ. In this particular, as we keep reading, um, it gets very interesting. And Christ returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book, okay? And he closed the book at this point. And he gave, gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bare him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And as we know, Joseph is the honorable father of Jesus Christ. He is the adopted father, not the actual donor um, paternal blood of, of Jesus Christ. Because we know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. So we know that Joseph is not the father, but according to adoption, he was Joseph's son. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, so also do here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country, but I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But none, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save in Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, because they knew they couldn't, they couldn't do any of these things. And it wasn't just Israel. Do you, do you get this? It wasn't just in Israel that these um, miracles were performed. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, Christ, passing through the midst of them, went his way. 
So he just stealthed right out of there. They didn't, they weren't able to put a hand on him. He was confronting them and uh, pointing out the truth and they didn't like it. God willing to be continued. May peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah be with you all. Your sister in Christ, Lisa.